I'm sure oh, everybody of you know that we don't know for sure what is gamma ray what the gamma ray burst is. Um, the, uh, I would try. I will try to answer a little bit, in some sense, simple question: What is a core collapse supernova? But still, we don't know for sure what is it. And uh, uh, even uh, my, my topic will be even a little bit more narrow. Uh, I'd like to tell you about so-called magnetorotational supernova uh, mechanism. And just at the end of my talk, I plan to tell a few words about um, uh, its connection and po or possible connection with gamma ray bursts. So this is uh, outline of my talk. I plan to make a very brief introduction. Uh, and then uh, tell you and try to explain what is magnetorotational mechanism of supernova explosion and how it works. And then I'd like to uh, present uh, our results of simulation with different type of field, uh, the appearing and development of magnetorotational instability, and then uh, our simulations with different uh, core masses, rotation rates, and dependence of the supernova explosion energy on these parameters. And uh, at the, almost at the end of my talk, I'll tell you about our recent results, namely simulations of magnetorotational supernova with different equations of state and comparison of different simulations, and hope to come to conclusions in the end. So uh, this is, uh, uh, everybody of you, I'm sure, know this uh, pretty standard supernova classification. The very rough. Uh, Classification uh, says that uh, supernova can be divided on two types. Type one, when we don't see hydrogen uh, in uh, the spectra, and type two, when we can see hydrogen lines. And uh, there is a de more detailed classification, type 1a. It's so called, uh, I would uh, say, it's a very special type of supernova. And, uh, 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 one of the simple um, features of this type of supernovas are, is that uh, the light curves are very similar to each other. And uh, the explanation of the mechanism of um, this type of supernova is more or less um, at the advanced stage, so to say. So most uh, supernova community agree that uh, this is thermonuclear supernova and detailed um, numerical uh, multidimensional simulations show that um, uh, supernova energy and details of um, explosion light curves pretty good uh, can be explained by the theory. There are another types, uh, type 1b and type 1c supernova with some details which are written here and uh, um, also uh, as I told you type 2 uh, supernova usually these type 1b, type 1c, and type 2 supernova are so-called core collapse supernova. And uh, of course, there is more detailed supernova classification. For example, tomorrow in the talk of Professor Chugai, there will be, uh, his talk will be devoted to supernova type 2n, and so on. So um, just, uh, uh, again, uh, I want to continue the introduction. How, how can we uh, see uh, and what, what do we see at the final stages of the stellar evolution? We have loss of stability, we have degrees of adiabatic index. Uh, I, I just briefly described all the processes which take place for co-collapse supernova iron dissociation. We have collapse itself at the high densities and high temperatures. We have matter neutronization. And in the central part of the collapsed uh, core, collapsed iron core, we, uh, I mean, the matter reaches uh, nuclear values. Uh, in our simulations, we found this value, but it can be a little bit higher or lower. Uh, of course, uh, for these uh, extreme um, uh, parameters, impo it, it's important to take into account uh, uh, processes connected with neutrino and in the central parts of the core where uh, neutron star is forming. One of the most important uh, type of processes are Urca processes. And it's important to point out that due to so high density and also um, if we have very high magnetic fields, extremely high magnetic fields, like 10 to the 15 Gausses, uh, the matter becomes non-transparent for neutrino. 
And at the final stage of the collapse, we have uh, formation of proton neutron star with uh, radius from 10 to the 20 kilometers. And uh, uh, we know from the, from the theory that if the matter mass of the star is more than 30 to 40 solar masses, the black hole will be formed. And uh, everybody of you know that it's a very bright event. Uh, uh, um, the supernova explosion uh, 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 during the explosion, short explosion stage increases its brightness up to 9 to 10 orders. And uh, uh, we know that maximal supernova luminosity is, uh, can be comparable with galaxy luminosity. And theory and observations predict that uh, for more or less standard co collapse supernova, the explosion energy is something like 10 to the 51 ergs. Uh, there are um, different, uh, there is a uh, more or less long history of the uh, uh, development of uh, co collapse supernova theory. The, one of the first uh, models was a uh, spherical symmetrical model suggested by uh, people and investigated by people uh, right in here, Colgate White, then Russian people also. And uh, uh, this model, uh, I mean, uh, one D numerical simulation of this model showed that after the collapse, a shock, uh, bounce shock uh, appears, moves from the forming neutron star to the distance about 100 kilometers, maybe 200 kilometers, and stops, and no explosion. And, uh, but uh, what we have from the observations, and we know that uh, uh, practically almost all, maybe uh, all uh, supernova explosions are asymmetrical. And one of the very good examples is supernova 1987A. Uh, the next step was to take into account uh, Neutrino convection, of course, to go to from 1D to 2D or multi-D or 3D um, approach and to take into account Neutrino convection and different hydrodynamical instabilities. And there are different uh, 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 groups in the world which work. Uh, they try to take into account neutrino convection inside proton neutron star, which a little bit increase the energy of the radiated neutrino, but still doesn't help to explosion. And people um, also uh, try to simulate neutrino convection after the shock front. And now, um, uh, few groups in the world try to simulate directly the uh, Boltzmann equation with all detailed neutrino physics to in, in 3D in general relativity to uh, try to explain the um, explosion of supernova by neutrino. Uh, but uh, the results of simulations are not uh, still uh, uh, completely reliable. I mean, the people they, uh, who work with neutrino supernova, sometimes they get explosion, sometimes they don't get explosion. But another important point, they don't reach uh, energy uh, of explosion uh, up to 10 to the 51 erg. Usually it's about uh, 5 or 10 times smaller. And uh, there are other mechanisms which were suggested a little bit more recently, so-called SASI, which still is developing uh, it, when, when we have... Uh, uh, this bounce or accreting shock and at the, during the long uh, time it's expected that uh, the, the instability of the shock will be developed and it can uh, lead to explosion. But um, also still uh, multidimensional self-consistent simulation doesn't give explosion uh, every time. And uh, another, another mechanism was suggested by Adam Burroughs, uh, so-called acoustic supernova. And uh, the idea was if we have a uh, neutron star, just, just burned neutron star and this stalled shock, the idea was that um, acoustic energy will be tuned um, um, by some um, mechanisms and then it can lead to the uh, pushing the shock and producing supernova explosion. Uh, one of the other mechanisms is so-called uh, mechanism is connected with phase transition when uh, we form not just neutron star uh, uh, but uh, quark gluon plasma, uh, so-called strange star. Uh, but we don't know too much about uh, details. Uh, I mean, uh, of the uh, I mean uh, properties of the matter in this uh, condition. 
And uh, the mechanism which I want to tell you about is mechanism which was suggested by Bisnavat Kogan in 1970, uh, it more than 40 years ago. It's a mechanism which is connected with rotation and magnetic field. Uh, as, um, I th as I think everybody of you know that uh, uh, when we have collab collapsing a star, we have more than enough uh, sources of energy to produce uh, explosion. It's uh, neutrino energy, which is extremely high, it's gravitational energy, it's rotational energy, and so on. And the only problem is how to extract and um, uh, e at least small part of um, any types of this energy and to transfer it to the kinetic radiational energy. And the idea of Bisnavati Kogan was uh, suggested to uh, take uh, part of rotational energy, uh, in some sense it's part of gravitational energy, and transfer it to the uh, explosion energy by magnetic field. So if we have um, rotating and magnetized, magnetized uh, press supernova, due to non-uniform collapse we have uh, differential rotation, we have um, amplification of magnetic field, and a magnetic field can work as a transition belt which can transfer the angular momentum uh, from one Lagrangian particle to another one and uh, at least part of the rotational energy can be transferred to the uh, radial uh, kinetic energy and can lead to the supernova explosion. And uh, uh, approximately the same time uh, uh, the first 2D calculations made by LeBlanc Wilson were published uh, and they use extremely large uh, initial magnetic fields. Uh, the magnetic field energy was approximately, uh, was comparable with gravitational energy of the star and due to configuration of the magnetic field they found that the um, explosion or ejection works like a jet which is collimated to the axis. Since that time different groups uh, work in this field and still continue, not everybody is uh, mentioned here, uh, cited here, but it's rather a popular uh, topic now. Especially it's also pot important uh, in connection with uh, possible gamma ray burst explanation. So for example, if we could reach the explosion energy for magnet rotation supernova up to 10 to the 52 ergs, then uh, it could be quite uh, good uh, explanation uh, of supernova, oh sorry, of gamma ray burst. But uh, the main problem from the mathematical point of view is smallness of this parameter relation. Or, I mean, uh, actually, or physically speaking, two weak initial magnetic fields. Mathematically speaking, it's stiff uh, set of uh, uh, partial differential equations because this parameter stands near time derivative. So, uh, um, physically speaking, the problem has two extremely different time scales. One is very small acoustic time scale in this uh, core because it's very dense and a very huge uh, time scale of evolution of magnetic field. And if we use traditional for the computational astrophysics uh, so-called um, explicit methods which majority of people doing simulations in astrophysics use, then we can, uh, can't reach the um, explosion because the current uh, restriction of time step is uh, very severe. That's why uh, we used uh, so-called implicit scheme, which is much more complicated in realization. I mean, uh, computer code is much uh, more sophisticated, but we can avoid uh, this uh, restriction. Uh, so uh, the, the main difference between uh, neutrino-driven mechanism and uh, magnetic mechanism is that uh, when we have a uh, collapse and neutrino uh, burst, uh, we, neutrino goes, uh, some of them, uh, small, very small part of them are trapped and can help to push the shock. But uh, when they go, um, when they are emitted, uh, there is no to, uh, any other support for the shock to go, uh, to survive and go and make an explosion. But in the case of magnetic field, we have rotating, um, con continuously rotating uh, uh, and very rapidly rotating uh, neutron star which uh, um, winds up the um, force lines of magnetic field and it works like a piston, so-called MHD piston, which uh, pushes uh, or supports uh, the 
this MHD shock for a li little bit or some longer time and can help to produce a supernova explosion event. The set of equations which we solve is pretty standard. It's a set of MHD equations with cell gravitation. Uh, in the case of infinite conductivity, we use, uh, uh, for simplicity, uh, Newtonian gravitation. Um, because in this case, we, ha we have to, if we, of course, it's important to take into account uh, general relativity effects, but it's um, very difficult or even impossible to um, take them into account approximately or in, on fixed metrics because of um, the uh, situation that we have to calculate all the details inside the forming neutron star also. And we, uh, we use two-dimensional approach. It's actual symmetry and, uh, for simplicity, equatorial symmetry. And other notations are more or less standard. And as for equation of state, we use um, uh, the equation which take into account these processes, degeneracy of electrons and neutrons, relativity of electrons, nuclear transitions, nuclear interactions. Temperature effects, of course, were taken into account. And all these uh, things were taken into account uh, in a very simple manner. It's uh, approximation of formula. Uh, and uh, uh, as for neutrino, we also uh, include them uh, in consideration, but also in very simple way, just a source term in the energy equation, because the uh, details of neutrino processes, they are very complicated for the uh, simulations, but are not so important uh, for the magnetic rotation mechanism. For the magnetic rotation mechanism, the only thing which is important is just to uh, energy balance or, uh, or amount of energy losses. And as for initial model, we take a cool white dwarf uh, at the stability limit, and then we slightly increase its mass just to move it from the uh, stable situation and impart some, for example, uniform rotation on it and see what will be with uh, this model. For uh, you do not include the additional equation in this initial condition. What, what? So this is a single object. Oh, yes. We just consider only uh, um, iron core and all events which take place inside the iron core. We neglect even the envelope of the star. And of course, uh, maybe I, I tell just a few words at, at the end of my talk about the uh, importance uh, of consideration of this model in the uh, binary system, because uh, it has some features. So uh, for simulations, we, as I told, we use very special, uh, specially developed method, which was developed. Uh, Question. Yes, please. Uniform rotation is uniform omega, like solid body rotation? Or exactly. Uniform no, uh, solid body. Solid body, but uh, uh, it's not so. No, it's, it's just for the, for the for beginning. Initial uh, for, oh, for initial configuration, of course, no. We, we have a magnetic rotation instability at much developed stage. Yes. Because uh, initially we, we use very, very weak magnetic field, right. which it's, it's, is too weak to, um, to initiate the MRI. Uh, and um, as, uh, uh, I, want, I want to tell you that this method, uh, which is... Um, which we use for the simulation, it's on triangular grid, it's Lagrangian grid. It's also important to point out that this grid is uh, of variable structure, so we need to make remapping of the grid, and it allows us to dynamically adapt the grid. And the, uh, this method was developed here in Moscow State University, in the Department of uh, Computational Mathematics and Cybernetics, under the guidance of Professor Adelian. So, uh, as I told you, when, when we start from, from the initial model, which is not in the, uh, sta stability, in the stable condition, uh, it immediately starts to collapse. And here you can see the result in a short time, 0.1 and something seconds. And the um, system consists of a dense core. Sorry, it's in uh, undimensional variables, but maximal density, this red uh, color, corresponds to these uh, nuclear densities. And uh, 0.01 is about distance of about 10 kilometers. And extended and light envelope. And uh, I must uh, say that uh, these kind of simulations were made by many, many groups. Important point here is uh, the distribution of angular velocity after the collapse. 
the uh, angular velocity uh, is uh, very, uh, how to say, uh, is differential. So uh, the central uh, dense core or forming neutron star rotates very quickly. Its pe period is about just a few milliseconds. And here you can see angular velocity distribution along the equatorial um, plane. It's very uh, steep uh, uh, plot. So uh, as for the um, initial uh, model, we decided to use uh, uh, the quadruple-like mag initial magnetic field and see what will be with this field. But uh, if, it, if we don't switch on magnetic field just to make a collapse, we, we, we can have uh, um, form, form proton neutron star, uh, bounce shock, which stands, as I told you about, uh, at the distance from 100 to 200 kilometers. And this um, system can stay in magnetic field. Initially, we switch on just purely a poloidal magnetic field, pure quadrupole. And we see that uh, due to differential rotation, it amplifies. According to the uh, topology of the field, we have two extremas. Say this can be negative, this positive, or vice versa. It doesn't mean uh, in this case. And in a short time, uh, uh, we can reach um, very strong uh, values of poloidal magnetic field, extremely strong poloidal magnetic field, 10 to the 16 Gausses. But I must uh, point out that uh, first, due to magnetorotational stability, which I tell you about a uh, little bit later, um, we have a chaotic uh, uh, movement of matter here, and, we ha and these values are of the magnetic field are just uh, values of the um, uh, chaotic magnetic field for a very, very short time. In a, in a short time, it will be um, reconnected, maybe after a uh, supernova explosion, and probably come to the um, much smaller values. At least after the explosion and until the end of our simulations, it's about um, half a second or maybe a little bit more, we come to the uh, situation when the magnetic field at the border of neutron star is 2 by 10 to the 15 Gaussians. Okay, you can ask me that, or you can say that uh, these uh, values of magnetic field, 10 to the 14 Gaussians, is too large for the traditional pulsar. Uh, but um, again, I must uh, stress that this is uh, also so-called chaotic uh, value, and probably due to the um, uh, reconnection of magnetic field after some time, it will come to the, uh, or some other dissipational processes, it will come to the um, normal values like 10 to the 12 Gaussians. So uh, here I hope to show you two movies. This is the results of our simulations. You can see this is MHD shock wave which goes outside, and this is specific angular momentum which due to, uh, due to um, uh, uh, configuration of magnetic field, namely a quadruple-like magnetic field, uh, mainly uh, is developing uh, uh, near the uh, equatorial plane. And this is a time evolution of different, not all, but uh, most important types of energy. The black line is um, time evolution of rotational energy. This is the main reservoir of the energy for supernova explosion. And another important plot is a uh, blue one. It's uh, kinetic poloidal energy or uh, energy of radial motion. And uh, actually, it's um, explosion energy. And you can see that about 10% of the rotational energy uh, was transformed to the explosion energy. But uh, uh, sorry, here also some other um, plots, neutrino losses and neutrino uh, luminosity. Uh, during the uh, explosion. And here's, here is a, there are two main plots of the uh, simulations. It's ejected energy and ejected mass. As for ejected mass, is very small because here, uh, because we consider only the iron core. When, when the shock will move uh, through the envelope, it will uh, involve much more mass. But as for ejected energy or explosion energy, it probably will be saturated to this value and we come to the result to the value 0.6 by 10 to the 51 ergs. And it's pretty um, uh, comparable with observational uh, results and um, theoretical 
estimations. Another example of the uh, uh, magnetic rotational supernova is uh, explosion of dipole-like initial magnetic field. The situation here is almost the same, but uh, the only difference is that uh, in the case of quadrupole, the magnetic field was parallel the, to the equatorial plane, but here it's almost orthogonal, or exactly orthogonal. So, and in this case, uh, the mm, picture, or I mean, the uh, scenario of the explosion is a little bit different. We still have MHD shock, which goes outside and which is pushed by the uh, MHD piston, but uh, due to um, due to topology of the magnetic field, now it develops in different direction. Now it develops mainly near the rotational axis, and uh, we can uh, say that it looks like uh, forming proto jet, which probably can, it, it's not uh, too uh, collimated. Uh, but uh, you can see entropy here and uh, specific angular momentum here. It's not very collimated, but uh, when, when it will be developed uh, through the magnetized envelope and it's uh, strongly and non-uniformly rotating, we hope that then, or even maybe a little bit later, it can be collimated due to magnetic field. And uh, the explosion energy and ejected mass are approximately the same as in previous situation. So uh, um, it's pretty good for the um, uh, normal supernova. Now uh, I want to uh, tell a few words about uh, historical um, things connected with this mechanism. After its suggestion, some years later, it was an um, attempt to simulate it in 1D. And in 1D uh, approach, the star looks very strange. It was infinite cylinder uh, with amplifying or winding up magnetic field. And it was found uh, from the simulations that when we decrease the strength of initial magnetic field, the time of uh, explosion or the time of amplification of magnetic field increases uh, very, very significantly. If we have this parameter, so explosion uh, time is proportional to the one over square root of this parameter. So if we decrease uh, uh, alpha by, uh, by uh, 10, prim 10, time, 10 orders, then we have, to, we have uh, the time of explosion, which is a million times or uh, 100,000 times uh, larger than... Uh, just phys phys physical time. Time of... Uh, yes, but is this second or is this hydrodynamical scale? It's undimensional. It can be second. Usually, of course, it's seconds. But it, it's just a model. It, it just, I just uh, want to tell you, just want to tell you the drawbacks of 1D model. Because of lack of... Uh, uh, we, we, in 1D case, we don't have enough uh, degrees of freedom. And we don't have uh, um, uh, possibility to develop any instabilities. Uh, this is Defin definitely, yes, of course. You can see it here, or <laughs> you can count it here. <laughs> but uh, in 2D case, we have a much, much more um, interesting situation. We have extra degree of freedom, and in this case, magnetic field can be, or different components of magnetic field now can be amplified exponentially. And it's connected with the development of magnetorotational instability which means that magnetic field, as I told you, grow exponentially. Uh, different types of magnetic rotation instability were uh, investigated by different people during uh, many people, starting from Denji, Velikov, Chandrasekhar, Tyler. Uh, then it, um, in 1990, first was uh, successfully applied to accretion disks by Balbus and Hoyle. And then it still was investigated by different people numerically and theoretically. And uh, here the plots, uh, um, it's time dependence of, for example, say, uh, uh, magnetic toroidal energy in ERGs uh, for different uh, values of this parameter. We made simulations for wide, very wide range of this parameter from 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 12. And uh, I must say that if no um, MRI, 
then even uh, application of implicit scheme, which is free from the uh, uh, restriction on time step, we couldn't uh, make simulations for uh, small values of this parameter. Thanks to MRI, we can uh, reach explosion even for a very, very small magnetic field in 0.5 seconds starting from the beginning because uh, components of magnetic field grow exponentially and we immediately come to the situation when the pressure of magnetic field is enough to produce uh, explosion. And uh, here we plot, plotted so-called experimental um, uh, curvature or experimental line for, uh, from our numerical experiments uh, showing that uh, time dependence of this parameter alpha in 2D case is absolutely different. In this case, for example, just for example, I sh want to show you that if we have alpha uh, decreased by six orders, then uh, explosion time is increased only uh, two times. It's again in undimensional variables. You can say it hours, you can say it weeks, seconds, but it's just, just for example. Of course, it's less than second in reality. And this is just uh, uh, series of pictures explaining how it works. Uh, the plot, the color is a toroidal component of magnetic field, the, uh, la, the arrows are the poloidal one. And when, when we have uh, collapse and uh, linearly increased uh, components of magnetic field, we come to the situation when we have uh, poloidal vortices and these poloidal vortices increase poloidal uh, uh, components of magnetic field due to the um, uh, the fact that magnetic field is frozen into the matter. And this uh, stretched or uh, um, uh, uh, poloidal magnetic field immediately lead to decrease to increase of the toroidal magnetic field. The increase of toroidal magnetic field leads to uh, increase of these uh, poloidal vortices and we have positive feedback and the development of instability. And we suggested a so-called uh, toy model for the explanation of this uh, situation and show that it's possible to have uh, exponential growth of magnetic, of magnetic field in this toy model. Uh, the next point which we uh, decided to simulate uh, is what will be the dependence of the uh, magnet rotational supernova explosion energy on the core mass and initial angular momentum. We calculated uh, uh, number of variants uh, with different initial core from 1.3 to 1.75 solar masses and um, with different initial um, rotational energy. And we found that when we increase the mass of the uh, star, we increase the poloidal energy and especially important point that we increase the explosion energy when we increase the um, energy of rotation. So. In our simulations, uh, we reached uh, something like 2.5 by 10 to the 51 ergs of the uh, explosion energy, which is pretty good. For instance, when you are making this initial angular velocity of 2.5 second, per second, when it collapses, is it starting to the proton neutron star is rotating almost at the breakup speed or not? So for the higher rotation speed. That's right. That's right. Is, is the proton neutron is not that far? Is it is rotating approximately at the breakup speed or what what is this is the speed compared to the breakup speed? Well, it, it, it difficult difficult to of course it's pretty close to break up speed, but close, but I know it's pretty close, but the question is is it like ten percent of the breakup speed? It's, it's difficult for, answer, uh, for me to answer you now with numbers, but uh, I must say, I, I can say that uh, the, uh, we, we see the formation of uh, neutron star with, uh, with uh, nuclear densities because, as far as I understand, if, if the rotational energy or rotation of the neutron star would be too large, then we don't see even the formation of the neutron star. It will be just uh, ejected or just stretched. And um, what uh, important point to uh, mention here uh, that the magnet rotation supernova explosion mechanism always produces a symmetrical supernova. And another point which is also important for this mechanism that jet possible kick of neutron star or jets and uh, rotational axis are always aligned. 
And in the paper by Johnson and colleagues, uh, they show that uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, observational data show that uh, velocity vector and rotational axis are aligned at birth. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this picture, I just want to show you a very nice example uh, made by uh, Hanawa and colleagues uh, of first 3D, 3D simulation of magnetic rotational supernova in very, very simplified um, approach. They uh, use strong initial magnetic field, very simple equation of state, no neutrinos transport, but they show that the uh, jets which they found are directed along the axis of rotation. And here, well known for you, uh, a picture of CAS A, and uh, some years ago the second jet was found, and we expect that probably this uh, supernova was exploded as a magnetic rotational supernova. And just a few words about our recent results. Now we applied a modified equation of state with approximate treatment of uh, electron captures, neutron transport. We, we used uh, a little bit simplified neutron leakage scheme and we add these two equations to the um, set of equations which we, are, we were solving and take into account neutron transport in, in this way. We also take into account neutron pressure just to be physically more correct. And I must say that uh, comparison of results of with this much more complicated uh, physics is uh, in pretty good agreement with our simplified physics. When we um, used equation of state which didn't use uh, Ye and Yl, and the explosion energy and all details are very, very good. We also found the uh, formation of magnetic rotational instability and all other details. So I come to conclusions um, which can be uh, expressed in the following. First, the magnetic rotation mechanism works. It gives a supernova explosion. It pretty weakly sensitive to the <coughs> sorry, equation of state and details of neutrino cooling mechanism. It's uh, magnetic rotational supernova are um, always asymmetrical, which we, what we have in nature. Sometimes we can get collimated jet, which can be directly connected with gamma ray bursts. And I didn't tell about it here, but we can easily, due to configuration of magnetic field, we can have a uh, one-sided jet and kicked pulsar, with pretty, which is moving pretty rapidly. And of course, it's important to explain all details of this mechanism in 3D. And I hope that tomorrow morning, the first talk um, of Professor Nagataki will be devoted to uh, some 3D results of uh, connected with uh, these uh, uh, things. Thank you.